G'day guys, before we hop into today's vlog, I just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. From now on, I'm going to be putting out daily vlogs every single day. I'm going to be tracking my process, playing these 1, 2, 6 max games, hopefully moving up in stakes. But even if I don't, you'll get to watch me fall on my face every single day on this YouTube channel. So make sure you hit subscribe so you get the new videos as they come out every single day. For now, on to the vlog. G'day guys, welcome back to the vlog. It is currently 4pm on a Monday afternoon here in Melbourne and I said yesterday that I wasn't going to play any poker all of Monday and I've actually stuck to it so far. Yep, even I'm a little surprised I was actually able to void off the temptation to go play poker but I think a day off was well overdue for me. Like I said, I actually I, I looked at my you know results and I actually haven't not played poker um, for the past 50 days, so to take a day off, I think I'm, I'm overdue for it and I think it'll be good for me. But it is a daily vlog, so you know I've got to get a vlog out for you guys today, even though I'm not playing poker. But I did want to take this opportunity to discuss something very important as a poker player, and that's how to deal with downswings in poker. Obviously, it's something pretty relevant to me. Right now, I've lost about 10 buy-ins in the past few days, which I think is probably the, in terms of buy-ins, is probably the biggest downswing I've had within a few day period. So definitely something relevant to me right now. Hopefully you guys get something out of this as well. This isn't the first downswing I've gone on before. I've gone on a few downswings playing live poker, but this is the first downswing I've had playing online poker. But fortunately, from my experience playing live poker, having gone on those downswings before, I do have a few strategies and tips I can give you guys out there and I can remind myself of to help you when you're going through a downswing. The first and most important thing I do when I start to notice I want a downswing is to take some time off the of poker. I think when I'm, particularly for a person like me and probably for a lot of you guys as well, when I do get like obsessed with poker and super dialed into playing a lot, putting in a bunch of volume, thinking about strategy, you know, even when you're not playing, etc., studying, Sometimes it's hard to see the forest through the trees if you're so dialed in and focused on actual poker and strategy. But sometimes you sort of just forget like key concepts that are more important and you're just trying to you know, figure out the nitty gritty. And sometimes if you do take time away and then come back to it later, you sort of start off in a more, just seeing things more clearly from a broader perspective and you start doing more sensible things. One thing I've talked about in this vlog before is the importance of putting in volume and obviously, if you are taking time off, you're gonna sacrifice on volume a bit, which obviously is not a good thing. But if you think about it in the long run, if I take one day off and then I play the next six days of the week of my A game, because I took the day off and I didn't get burned out, those extra six days where you are putting in full volume, they're gonna be way more worthwhile than if you play all seven days and like all seven of them, you're like playing your C game because you're burnt out and you're tired. So, you know, I, I don't like making excuses for not putting in volume, but I think if there is a good reason, this would be it. So if you're going through a downswing, first bit of advice, just take some time off of poker, but only a little bit. The second tip I would give people starting a downswing is to move down in stakes. So if you're a regular at 1-2 online, move down to 51 online. If you're a regular at 51 online, move down to 25-50 online, etc. The reason I think it's a good idea to move down in stakes when you are having a downswing is when you go and play the small stake game, it's gonna be a lot easier to win. And when you start winning at the smaller stakes, you start to gain that confidence back up, you start to build it back up. That can be a huge, huge downside to starting a downswing is just the loss of confidence, starting to feel like, oh, I'm not good enough to beat this game. Well, if you do move down in stakes and it's gonna be much easier for you, you're gonna start winning, that's gonna build your confidence back up. So that is another good strategy. If you are starting to downswing, just move down in stakes, play the softy game, build that confidence back up. And then once you start winning at that, you can take that newfound confidence and go back to your regular game and start winning again. The third tip I would give to dealing with a downswing is look at your past results from the game. If you're a winning player, you're putting in volume, you can look back at your past results and understand, okay, like, even though I might not be feeling the most confident right now, I can look back at my results and know, no, I am good enough to beat this game. I've done it in the past. If I've done it in the past, I can do it again. So that's another great tip. If you keep your results on an app or in an Excel spreadsheet, just open it up, look back at those past results, and they'll be great for your confidence to get you feeling good about you are a winning player. 
And the fourth and final tip I'll give for going on a downswing is just to study poker more. You should be studying poker regardless if you are winning or losing, but when you are losing, there might be some fundamental mistakes you're making. Maybe you're not exploiting your opponents optimally. And when you do put the time in with like Equilab or with Pio, even, you know, however you do study poker, just discussing it with friends and whatnot, just put more time into study and your fundamentals will improve, which lastly will get you out of the downswing when you start winning more. The reason I put this one last is because you really should be doing that stuff regardless if you are winning or losing, but it's just another tip to help you improve your game regardless. So that's gonna wrap up the vlog for today, guys. Obviously, it's gonna be a bit of a shorter one with me not actually having played a session, but don't worry, I'm gonna to stick to my word just one day off, then we're back into putting in more volume tomorrow, hopefully with a newfound perspective and we can crush the game tomorrow. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe so you get that vlog when it comes out tomorrow. For now, I'm out of here. Peace.